Hey friends, welcome back to the channel. My name's Harry and I'm a third year paramedic student studying at Victoria University in Australia. I'm also aspiring to hopefully get into medicine next year. Fingers crossed. If you're new to the channel, make sure to check out my other videos and if you like what you see, don't forget to give it a like and subscribe. All right, so today I'm really here to give you guys a bit of a rundown about my experience applying for medicine and some of the events that happened along the way. And at the end of the video, I'll give you guys a bit of an insight into some of the main lessons that I've learned throughout the process. All right, let's get into it. So I think the desire really began to grow when I was in about year 10 of high school. So that probably would have been like, what, 2012? And I would have been like 16 years old or something back then. And I was doing psychology at the time. And I found that I was absolutely incredibly fascinated with how people thought. And this then developed into me really loving to listen to people's problems and issues and try and find a way to actually sort it out and see if we could fix it. Honestly, I was just so fascinated by the way that people perceived issues and different struggles in their lives and how they reacted to it and attempted to try and overcome them. So then I kind of thought, hey, you know, I like listening to people and I like trying to help people through their problems why not become a psychologist? And then I thought, hey, why not go one better and be like, well, I can make a little bit more money, do a little bit more, so why not become a psychiatrist? And then, you know, if that doesn't really go according to plan, I can just drop back down and then I'll just be a psychologist, like, no worries, right? So really, if only I knew how flawed this reasoning actually was. Firstly, I'm pretty sure I had absolutely no interest whatsoever of actually wanting to become a doctor. I simply, just wanted to be a psychiatrist. I mean, I knew you had to do medicine and become a doctor to become a psychiatrist, but the whole idea of med uh, medicine and becoming a doctor just never really interested me at the time. So that's red flag number one, right? <laughs> red flag number two was that I'd never even considered the fact that if I wanted to go and do post-grad medicine, which is like seven to eight years of study, including the undergrad, and then went, oh, I didn't really like that. No, I don't, I'll just be a psychologist instead. Then I'd have to go back to uni, do a psychology undergraduate degree, and then a really competitive honors and masters on top of that, which is like four or five years of study. So yeah, naturally my parents, of course, were incredibly proud of me and so happy that I was, you know, I had this dream and this aspiration. However, none of my parents had actually gone to university, so they couldn't really offer any insight into the fact that if you didn't like it, you didn't have to start again, or you'd have to swap and change, and it would all set you back a couple of years. They were just happy that their son was following their dreams and had ambitions and to go and achieve something, really. So anyway, I jump forward a year or two, and I'm doing biology in year 11 and year 12. And I was totally fascinated. I really, really loved that biology side of things. And it really cemented my mind that, hey, you know, being a doctor would actually be pretty fun. And I more started to lean towards the idea of, well, being a psychiatrist would be great. And I'd love to get there, but I'm also, I would also be really happy just being a doctor because it seems like such an interesting and fascinating field that I would be really fulfilled by. So fast forward through high school, finished that, tick done, new beauty, all sorted. And then I applied for a Bachelor of Biomedical Science at Deakin University. And that was great because it was about 10, 15 minutes up the road for, uh, from where I lived. So it was all pretty, pretty great if you ask me. Now, the funny thing about this is that I absolutely hated maths, like could not stand it, was no good at it, absolutely god awful. And the funny thing about this biomed course at Deakin was that it was the only course, and I'm pretty sure Victoria, that allowed entry with a lower quality of maths having been studied in your final year of secondary school. So naturally I snatched up that one and said, that's where I'm going to go and headed straight for it. So after applying, I actually did get accepted there. So what I studied was a Bachelor of Biomedical Science majoring in infection and immunity. So this is, you know, little 18 year old me just been accepted into this intensive three year science degree, hoping to get into medicine. But I had absolutely no idea the amount of commitment and effort required to actually be competitive to apply at the end of this degree. Like I'm going in thinking that I can just cruise through and I'll be fine. I'm pretty sure at this point in time, I didn't even realize that you had to actually sit the GAMSAT as like a prerequisite for postgraduate medicine. <laughs> so anyway, as you can imagine, young naive me jumps in and pretty much suspends this whole three years, you know, going to uni parties, prioritizing other social events and other social desires without actually putting in the time and the effort required to do well at uni. And so clearly I didn't do very well. I think this is a bit of a trap that a lot of people actually fall into after finishing their schooling and I fell into it completely. 
we get into this idea that once we finish school, if we just go straight into a university and go and finish that, we'll get a job right afterwards and be able to move forward in our lives. However, that's not always entirely the case. Like I did biomed, didn't get good enough grades, and at the end of bi at a biomedical degree, there isn't actually much job prospects. Like you can do a little bit of further research or anything if that's your thing, but other than that, it doesn't really lead you anywhere. And <laughs> there was no way I was gonna do research at all. Anyway, that's a thing for another time. So this is me at 21, having just realized that I'd spent the last three years of my life not actually moving myself academically forward to get into medicine at the end of it all. So I think I'd kind of lost a little bit of perspective and a little bit of that drive and motivation to really try and get into medicine. And to be fair, I I started to kind of feel like I just wasn't capable and didn't have the ability or the potential to get in. And I didn't really see myself as good enough. And I think this was linked with a lot of actual mental health issues that I was struggling with at the time. And I essentially closed myself into this box where I felt that I wasn't good enough to achieve the goals that I really wanted to achieve. And I just no longer had the effort or the, you know, that drive to really achieve them. So this resulted in me actually taking a year off from studying and allowing me to disconnect from that schooling world and hopefully find sources of inspiration and something else to kind of motivate me outside of what, to be fair, was the only real environment I'd known my whole life. I am a huge advocate for people having a break between finishing secondary school and going into their university studies or even full-time work for that matter because up until that point, all you've actually known is that strict scheduling and rules from like age four to like age 18 and you've never actually broken away and experienced other ways of living your life. And I think this is just absolutely so crucially important for you to be able to grow and develop so that you can understand so that you can understand yourself a bit better before jumping into a big commitment like university or full-time work. Anyway, I'll have a video coming up about that in the coming weeks, so stay tuned if you're interested. During this time, I decided to do a bit of travel and I actually went to Seattle and London for a little bit. Now, I was really hoping to stay there for quite a while, but <laughs> unfortunately, um, <laughs> I had my bank card stolen in a hostel and had to ask mum and dad for money to actually fly me back home because I no longer had money to actually fund my trip. <laughs> so that lasted all in all about a month, really. And then I picked up, and <laughs> then had to walk back into my old job and be like, hi, remember me? <laughs> Get my job back, that were totally fine. And I think I worked there for about another four or six months before I kind of started to realize, hey, for me to feel contentment and to kind of get this satisfaction out of life, I realized that I actually have to have this constant mental stimu stimulation while also working in some kind of health field in a hands-on manner. I also felt I really wanted to commit myself to a lifelong passion and career in constantly learning and developing my skills. So at the time, I thought the best thing for me to do would be to apply to become a paramedic in Australia because being a paramedic sounded really cool to me and still sounds incredibly awesome and it's such a rewarding and really exciting job being out and about, using your hands and thinking all day. So I applied for the Bachelor of Paramedicine at Victoria University, just up in Melbourne, and I actually got accepted. So all this time I was still pretty unhappy. And it wasn't until about a year through my paramedic degree that I kind of had this realization essentially that I didn't actually want to be unhappy anymore. So I started to look into different ways that I could alter my thinking and change my behavior so that I could be more happy and less sad. Eventually I ended up reaching out to a friend who is really into the self-help genre and had been reading these books for quite a while. And he told me, come over right now. I've got about five books you need to read today. So I've gone, so I've run over there. Well, I haven't run, I've driven because it's like a 20 minute drive away. So I've driven over there and he's given me these five books and I read those books, all of those books in that year. And ultimately that completely changed my whole mental model and my framework for living in my everyday life. And it just made me so happy. It was probably the most beneficial decision that I've made in my entire life. And it's just made me such a better person and led me to who I am today. So those books were, if I remember correctly, it was 40 Ways to Be Miserable by Randy Peterson, uh, Atomic Habits by James Clear, Mindset by Carol Dweck, and Grit by Angela Duckworth. I'm pretty sure there was a fifth one, but I can't remember. Anyway, I'll put these books down in the description if you want to check them out yourselves afterwards. 
This put me entirely control back in my life. All of a sudden, I then realized that the only person in control of me was myself and that the only person that is responsible and capable of making me achieve my dreams and be successful is myself. My mental framework had been completely upheld and totally re-envisioned and renovated to actually realize this whole new way of living that I had been completely oblivious to beforehand. I actually had no idea the impact that reaching out to my friend would have on my life. So if you're struggling with any mental health issues of your own, please, please, please reach out to family and friends because you've no idea the positive impact that they can have on your life unless you actually give them the chance to. Reaching out to my friend was the single smartest decision I had made in years and I really, really wish I'd actually made it sooner. So after this whole metamorphosis, I suppose you could call it, I really regained my composure in life and this reignited that drive and that vision to actually want to become a doctor and get into medicine. I realized that I do actually have the potential to succeed. I just have to put the time and effort in to make it happen. So yeah, in my second year of paramedicine, this is what really spurred my registration to sit the GAMSA in September just last year in 2020. So I sat that with only about a month or so preparation and I got 59, which yeah, which to me was incredible. It was such a good score. I had no idea I was gonna score that high and let alone be on the verge of that actual competitive range. So I've then continued to study and apply myself for the March sitting this year just gone and currently waiting results. Hopefully I've got an inkling that they might actually be out in about two or three days time. So fingers crossed all goes well. And I'm now currently planning to apply to Deakin University Australian National University in Canberra and University of Wollongong in Wollongong, New South Wales. Just over a year ago, I would never have considered that I had the potential to be where I am today. I feel like we all have potential. We just sometimes simply lack the desire or the skills to tap into it. I'm also trying to make this YouTube channel and get this started and up and going so that I can pass on any knowledge and skills that I've picked up from my process onto you guys. And hopefully you guys can pick up a bit of benefit and you know value from it. Overall, I think the single most important thing is to just have faith and believe in yourself. I feel that we all have the potential to achieve anything we want in life. We just need to take the first steps towards making it happen. The only thing separating you and success is action. <sighs> all right, guys, if you made it this far, thanks for sticking through it. I really made this video in the hopes that if there's anybody else out there struggling with mental health issues or the medical process in general at all, that hopefully you guys got a little bit of advice and a little bit of insight into something that might actually motivate you and kind of help improve upon your own lives. I'm going to continue making more videos and similar videos like this in the future. So if you're new to the channel and you enjoyed what you watched, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button down there because it genuinely makes a big difference and I really honestly appreciate it. If you've got some own advice that you'd like to share or you're going through the medicine process yourself at the moment, leave a comment down below and I'll make sure to check it out after this. Alright, till next time guys. See ya.